I think one thing that came up that I didn't expect so soon was how much counselling you do in optometry. So it's definitely, optometry is part optometry, part counselling. And I was shocked that in my first few weeks, looking very young, you know, most patients thought I was 18, they were confiding in me, getting emotional, telling me things that I didn't think they would tell me. So that was something that shocked me. But what I realised was if they look at you and they trust you and they want to tell you these things, then you should listen to them and you should give your advice because they believe that you are worthy of listening and giving advice. A second thing that probably I didn't expect as much was the support we call the problem patient. The patient that comes in who's just not happy, who is questioning everything you do, who doesn't trust you because you do look so young. Um, and that was something that was, it was difficult. But what I worked out is if you're confident in what you're telling them, they, they believe you. So if you're nervous, they're not going to trust you. To build up confidence, probably the, the most common thing I did was I just asked questions. I was also very honest with the patient. I didn't make out that I knew things I didn't. So if I was unsure, I'd say, look, I'm a bit unsure of what's going on here. Just wait one moment. And I would go and ask either one or two of the optometrists that were working in the practice for their opinion. I think the key was I was always honest with the patient. I never made out that I knew what was going on if I didn't. And what was interesting was the patient never ever lost confidence in me because of that. They were more happy that I was honest with them and they were happy that I was getting a second opinion. Also, I did go home a few nights and look up textbooks and, you know, read Google. But at the end of the day, what I found was I learned better through experience rather than reading a textbook again. So it was better for me to ask the questions than to read the answers. I think one of the... One of the things that I wasn't anticipating, although it did happen once in the university, was uh, to have a patient sitting in the chair and you've done your eye exam and you've got a handle on all your things are out and making the guy, and to have to say to that person, um, you really need to not die. That's a big It's one thing saying to a person, this is a site treatment condition, I need you to have care that's going to stop that happening. Uh, it's, it's one thing to say to a person, this is inevitable. The way, it's, the way it's going on, as the doctor's been saying to you, there's not some further intervention. This is going to lead to functional blindness. You're going to need some support. But let's talk about how to move forward. Let's talk about how to get that support and, and keep your lifestyle good. But when it's, and you're not going to be able to drive anywhere, that is a very, very sad day for a lot of people because to a lot of people, their driving license is the end of the thing. And there are steps along the way. You know, there are, there are uh, ways of being able to set up a license that limits the person to, to say driving at night isn't okay or driving in bad weather isn't okay. You don't have lots of passengers or whatever the case may be. Um, but when it's, you know, really you need to stop driving now, it's taking that person to the place where all of a sudden they are reliant on their friends or family. If they're driving around, they're reliant on public transport, which is often something that they haven't had to do and so they've got to learn a whole new thing. And at the age that we're generally talking about, that's a big ask for a lot of these folks. So that can be, that was a bit of an unexpected thing that I didn't expect to have to deal with. But have had to on several occasions. Uh, and most recently, you know, it's Monday today, Friday I saw a gentleman in exactly that situation. He's got to stop now. And it's a pretty sad time. You're not set up with the skills to deal with that. You just need to reach down and find some empathy in you and, and be able to support them and be able to guide them towards getting the support that they need. Because there are plenty of places around who can support. There are, there are bodies who exist purely to help folks like that.